Hi, this is Mindy Lighthype. Welcome to Drawing the Beauty of Nature. Today I'd like to go over some of the supplemental drawing plant supplies that you may want to purchase for the class that you've just signed up for. These are only recommendations. You may want to purchase them at a later date to see if they would really be useful for you. I don't want you spending money unnecessarily. The first tool that I use occasionally are called proportional dividers. These are used with measuring, and they can be very useful in doing a measure of a one-to-one -one scale, but also they work very nicely when you're trying to scale up or scale down a specimen. For instance, if you are out drawing a tree, and the tree is 20 feet tall, and your sketch pad is 8 by 10, how do you get the tree onto the piece of paper in proper proportion? The proportional dividers are the tools that you're going to want. The proportional divider is a wonderful tool to use when scaling up and scaling down. Here are a pair of stainless steel proportional dividers and they can run you anywhere from $100 to $300. I was very lucky to find them at a garage sale and paid only about $20 for them. For this class I did some investigating and I purchased some online dividers and here is Derwent's proportional dividers. I was very disappointed when I got these because the size of them are enormous. They're about 15 inches long, very thick and very clumsy. On the website it did not give me the size, but this would be something that if you were going to do something very big and bulky, it would work. But if you're trying to work with a very fine specimen, I do not recommend them. The next proportional divider is plastic, very lightweight, and is approximately 12 inches, and the tips on the end of the points are narrow. It is also adjustable. You have multiple ratios that you can work within. These again are under $10. If you're going to buy a pair of these and you don't want to go for the big bucks, this is the proportional divider I recommend. Here is a small and easily transportable addition to your drawing supplies. It's a grayscale and value finder. This handy little tool helps you to decipher things in color and convert them into grayscale when you're working in graphite. Here is a flexible ruler or a flexible curve. This is traditionally a drafting instrument. I use this when I'm doing long stems. To try and get a curve sometimes can be very difficult, and this tool aids in helping me get nice, long, graceful lines. Also lines that I can do parallel and also have them taper. I find this a very, very useful tool. This tiny little instrument is called a frog, and what it is is it's a fairly heavy piece of metal with spikes sticking up out of the bottom of it, and it's used primarily for floral decorations. I like this because you can take your specimen and impale it onto the top of the frog and it will be freestanding. This strange little contraption is called helping hands and it's used in electronics. The little clips, which are called alligator clips, are also on a pivot. It's on an iron stand so it's fairly weighty and you can take branches and different specimens and put them in the clip and move them around at different angles. This is great when you need to be able to draw something that's floating in space and you need both hands free. The specimen will stay put and you can then have it stationary in a position that might be very tiring if you tried to hand hold it and also it wouldn't shake. These two small strips of plastic have a little pivot on the end like a compass and it's great to use to measure angles. It also has a ruler on it and it's see-through, so you're able to use it to, as a measuring guide and also to check your angles as you work along the picture plane. I use a natural daylight, ot light. This light has a natural daylight bulb and it is super for illuminating your subjects for scientific lighting. The ot light makes several different models from inexpensive tabletop models to floor standing models. You can also get a battery operated light from Ot Light, whichever you prefer. The one thing that you need to make sure is that you're able to move and pivot 
the lighting head up and down. If it is stationary and you cannot move it, it will not help you with your lighting. You can also use a desktop lamp that has a hood, but it would be better if it's a gooseneck that is adjustable, as you will want to adjust the height and the distance of your subjects. Having a hood or a direction is imperative, otherwise the light source will not work properly. One of the things that I recommend is some sort of a sketchbook. Sketchbooks are extremely personal, and you can go through the internet and be like a child in a candy store. There's so many sizes, so many different qualities and textures of paper, covers, fold out, spiral ring, you name it. I do find it beneficial to have a sketchbook for this class as we'll be taking a lot of notes and learning how to record information not only in drawing but also in writing to learn more about the beauty of plants. This is just a brief addition to the basic drawing supply list. You can download a PDF where I have listed where you can purchase these items on the internet. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me, mlighthype at mac.com. I look forward to seeing you in the upcoming class, and if you haven't already taken a class with me, you should review the drawing supply video for the foundation drawing class. Thank you and welcome to Drawing the Beauty of Plants.